cinders. You shall go to the ball. Every bride dreams of the perfect wedding day. Princess Day. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> but some <laughs> take it to extremes. <sighs> Meet the brides who will stop at nothing to get what they want. If I can't find the perfect dress, there just won't be a wedding. Too, too skirt. No, very. No matter what it takes. It looks lovely. I look like a £10 hugger. Or what it costs. I don't actually know how much we've spent. Oh, but you know, you just feel like you're doing so much stuff and, like, trying to hold everything together. And heaven help anyone who gets in the way. That bridesmaid is no longer coming to my wedding. Don't drink anymore. Don't, don't drink don't anymore. Drink. I'm going to be sick. You have got my rings, haven't you? I want to kill her. If you were like that at the end of the aisle, I will not walk down it. That bitch needs to die. Getting married is meant to be the happiest day of anyone's life. And for most people, it is. But it can also be one of the most stressful. So I'm a self-confessed diva. It's my way or the highway. I've got really high expectations. She's reduced people to tears over this wedding. I'm sure everyone you probably meet would say I'm a diva. But I only like good things, you know. I'm, I, there's no point getting married if it's going to look shit. For my wedding, I'm like, nah. It's going to be my way or jog. <laughs> We followed 18 badass brides planning their big day, and the first decision was how much cash to splash. For some, like Sophie, nah, it was just a rough guide. That's the cherry on the cake. It is for you, yeah. Because she's gone down the Winter Wonderland theme, that has been added on to okay. your original discussion that you've had. Phil's budget was a lot less than mine. He said probably about five or six grand. I. Logically, I've probably spent about nine or ten grand. Princess Day. Another one. Every day's Princess Day. <laughs> <laughs> Finding the perfect venue was next on the bridal to-do list. And for budget bride Holly, this was one of her biggest challenges. How many people can you get in here? Um, about 150 to 180. Yeah, that should be enough, yeah. <laughs> How much is it to hire? I would say it would cost you 100 pounds. This is actually perfect. Are you available on the 8th of October, Saturday? No. No. Oh. <laughs> We're not. We've got a um, meatloaf tribute band on that oh. night. Meatloaf's been booked for quite yeah. a while. And... That sucks. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and for others, like history teacher Rachel and her battle-weary husband to be Sean, it was all in the detail. I want my wedding to be a grand medieval affair. It is always in one grand hall, by candlelight, with two long banquet tables, and then the king's at the top. If only we were sitting on thrones. I think the thrones would just push it over the edge and turn it into a gimmick. David and Victoria Beckham have thrones. For many couples, the planning was of a more personal nature. Like self-confessed social media addict Aisha and her fiance Tom. I don't do exercise. For vanity, vanity, really. Yeah. I just do it because I like to maintain a high level of fitness. I'm the opposite. I'm about vanity, the gains. About four or five months ago is when I really started getting into training, you know, yeah. training hard. And, you know, it was all about making my bum bigger and my waist smaller. And I've seen the difference. And, you know, it, you know, when it came to the dress fittings and with my seamstress, I was like, make sure it's ridiculously tight. I want to show off my figure. I've worked hard for it. Despite the evidence that it seemed to be Tom working hard for it, Aisha was determined to be perfect for the big day. Amy and her fiancé, Pat, went for a more permanent form of planning. I am getting Pat's initials on my finger. So if I'm not wearing my wedding ring, I've still got his initials on there. I think it shows more commitment that it's there forever. Like, I can't remove it. I'll have to have my finger chopped off if he leaves me. <laughs> Neither. No backing out then. What are you doing to me? <laughs> A good question, Amy. And one religious Michelle was no doubt asked by her fiance Amit. Their six year engagement, without sex, must have tested the bonds of understanding. And in her preparation for the wedding night, she decided to sacrifice her modesty. And a little more besides. Getting a wax is really important because this is going to be me and Alex's first time together. So I feel like 
it has to be perfect as well. As much as I don't want to have to go through the pain of it, I just think it's a good thing to do to start off the marriage really well. Hold on, hold on my hand. Amit had to be content with the promise that the wait would be worth oh, it. Too far, Amit Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning of our relationship, it was really hard because Amit didn't obviously know that much about my face, so we knocked heads a bit in terms of like the whole sex before marriage thing. Just think about Mauritius. It's your honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> For him to be able to stick it out, let me know that then he must really love me. If he's willing to wait, because it's not everyone that is able to do that. Please, is this the last? Probably no. <laughs> ah! <laughs> is it worth it? I'd have to find out after I'm married, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so, Michelle. Let's hope so. Up in Stoke, 22-year-old aspiring model and full-time narcissist Nathan was also planning ahead for his big day. I'm sure everyone you probably meet would say I'm a diva, but I only like good things, you know. I'm, I, there's no point getting married if it's going to look shit. <laughs> Luckily for him, the man he was marrying was laid-back Mike, who's well used to dealing with diva moments. I'm the queen of this house, no, bitch. No, I, <laughs> I am. No. Far from it. You're the queen no. of your own little bubble you sit in. No. But you ain't the queen of anything else. And in Nathan's bubble of self-love, image was everything. In fact, he'd already spent £40,000 on cosmetic procedures to look just like his beauty icon, Katie Price. Katie Price is my idol. Um, I followed her from, like, when I was younger and then to the point where I've had, like, surgery to look like her. Do you know what I mean? Like, my nose. So that means done twice. Not that husband to be Mike was that bothered. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't need to do it for me. He doesn't need to do anything for me because to me he's he's, he's perfect the way he is. I need to look good for the wedding. I think that's the most important thing for me. And to look his best, he took extreme measures, booking into a clinic eight weeks before the wedding for a third and risky nose job. Third time lucky, I say. There's hardly no cartilage left, so. There's a 70% chance that it will collapse. But it was a risk he was willing to take to look like his idol, Katie Price, on his big day. I just want a more feminine nose and I love her nose. My nose job, it needs to look perfect. If it doesn't, then it's just going to completely ruin my photos. Fingers crossed, if he looks good, then it'll be worth it. Nathan had a nervous few weeks' wait to see if he had finally achieved the perfect look for the wedding. Why do I do it to myself? Too, too painful. Where would a wedding be without bridesmaids? Well, given how much drama is involved in sorting them out, probably a lot less hassle, especially if they're only nursery school age. Please. It was the morning of Holly's wedding to her fiancé, Dean, and everything was finally under control. And the bride was enjoying a well-deserved amuse-bouche. Backy days! <laughs> this is my breakfast. My sister-in-law got it for me. It's a sausage and egg mock muffin. But the wedding day glow was short-lived. Cue daughter, Ariana. <gasps> Ariana, that's enough! <laughs> Meep her! <laughs> Stop snatching! Shush! <laughs> Ariana! Yeah, thank you, that's mine. What have you done? She's got glitter all over the floor. Spooky, I'm having a fucking breakdown. It's hectic, stressful. It is a madhouse this morning. Can't wait until my mum fucking gets back. Holly got her wish and her hard-pressed mum appeared, but Ariana still wasn't happy. Sit down. No. Ariana, please. Look. No! Don't you dare! No! <laughs> no! Well, you know what they say about animals and children. 
they're often better behaved than the adults. Next, it was Bridge End's very own Rhiannon Lewis's turn to wrangle her bevy of bridesmaids into an elite fighting force. Hello. 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 So I've got 11 bridesmaids. Three of those are my sisters, one and my niece. They're all absolutely lovely, but they're mad as a box of frogs. Beth, pay attention. So I've got two dresses just to suit different sizes. Smaller ones had a more slim fitting, straight dress, whereas the bigger girls had a more flowing, curvaceous dress just to suit making sure everybody's happy. What dress are you in? I don't know. Can't replace the dresses. I have to ban them as bridesmaids. <laughs> I don't know nothing about these dresses. The feedback from the bridesmaids has been interesting. Some of them weren't happy, some of them were. A certain person thought it was too old for her, but we'll change her opinion today. It's my wedding, it's my way of the highway, simple. If she doesn't like it, she doesn't get to be a bridesmaid. But Rhiannon's younger sister, Bethan, wasn't happy. I don't like the dress. You know I don't. You know where the door is? I know, I just feel like a £10 hugger compared to everyone else. <laughs> How do you say that? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> I can't believe you said that. That's appalling. I do, though, because everyone else looks like they're wearing diamonds. A £10 hooker? Yeah. The dress didn't cost £10? It feels like You're it. You're wearing diamonds. I feel like I'm in, like, a black bag, but it's navy. <laughs> <laughs> so start jogging. I shall. I think I needed this. <laughs> Not much I can say, is there? Oh, yeah. There's the door. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody has any problems with me telling them what to do, I will remind them it's my wedding, not theirs, and it's my day, and they should listen or leave. Simple. Even with Mum stepping in to keep the peace, Bethan was not happy about her sister's choice of dress for her. I don't like this. I don't like this bit here, but it's very... It's flappy. I don't like this because it skims my stomach. If I changed it now, yeah, it just wouldn't make me a bridesmaid, so... Don't cry. Don't cry. I can see the tears. I can see the tears. Don't cry. I'll have to put up with it, when I? I look like an ugly drag queen. Shall we ask if we could put a pin in like this? Do you want yeah, a pin like this, that? It's just flappy. Would it be able to just put a little pin by here just to pin it back? There you go. Yeah. Happier now? Yeah. yeah. I just don't like the fact that it's skimming my stomach. So I've got to start jogging. That's it. There's no more negotiation. That's it. <laughs> After much pinning, pulling and pinching, it was time for the big reveal. <laughs> I really like it. You all look really nice. Do you want to see what you all look like together in a row? Because it is actually like... I'm pro of this. Weddings are high drama, or to be more precise, melodrama, especially when it comes to choosing the dress. In London, it was time for glamour model Verity to get her dress sorted. I don't want to look innocent little girl. Fit. Because you aren't an innocent no. little girl. No, <laughs> I want to feel like a heart in it still. But 2,000 miles away in Cyprus, Verity's soldier fiance Ash had seen something he wasn't happy about. Hello. Hello. I can't see you. Why? May I make a recommendation that you are 110% fucking honest with me? Because infuriating is not the fucking word. Why? What's wrong? One of Ash's squaddy mates had told him he'd seen something dodgy on her online modelling profile. I don't know what it is. Three. Babe, I don't... Fucking I'm not. Whoa. Is this a wind-up? Don't shout at me. Stop shouting at me. I'm not lying about anything. I don't know what you're talking about. Unless you explain properly, me and Breed are sat here and we don't have a clue what you're talking about. Stop talking at me. Well, I'm not in the wrong. Stop shouting at me. Right, I'm on my profile. What am I looking at? 2011. 2011. Is he joking? Babe, that was an Ibiza. I was a promo girl for a boat party. <laughs> yeah. Don't shout at... Google what it is and ring me back. That is literally... Promo. Yeah. Promo girl. Yeah, I've got it on there, what I was doing. I was giving out fucking flyers. I don't need this right now. I'm just going to try on a dress. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, I want to try this one. Model Verity was trying not to let the misunderstanding with her fiancé kill the mood.
ferret ear. That's so beautiful. That's really lovely. But could it be that despite the hiccup, Verity had at least found a dress she loved? Oh, lovely. Verity? I'm so annoyed at the moment. I feel so angry. Oh, don't be angry. <laughs> no, because it's fixed like this. Why do people keep saying to me, oh, you're doing it too soon and that, do you know what I mean? It's not the fact that it's just the case of he's, flo he's flown off the handle. That's all it is. Honestly, he will apologise to you. You know what I mean? You just feel like you're doing so much stuff and, like, trying to They're hold not... everything together. They're not appreciating Sorry. it. Sorry. That's fine. Dress is on. I've managed to have one dress on in this shop. And you know I'm stressed out of all that. And the last thing I need is you throwing accusations at me and listening to your mates. I kind of look a mess and I'm stood here in a, a beautiful dress. But even when you think you found your perfect dress, things can still go wrong. As bride-to-be Holly found out, she couldn't afford the dress she really wanted but was happy with her second choice. But would it impress her one woman judge and jury, best friend Siobhan? Holly knows I'm close enough to say to her what I'm really feeling, so I don't know whether or not she'll hate me if I'm being brutally honest, but <laughs> hopefully not. I'm not joking, that's gorgeous. <laughs> Don't cry because you're so real. See, I wasn't expecting that. I was <laughs> expecting something really, really like glitzy and like. I think once that's tied to it, it's just gonna, it's gonna fit you amazingly, like, a, like fit you like a glove. I am on a diet, but I just can't lose the weight. It just won't come off. I'm gaining weight <laughs> more than losing it. It cost me six hundred pound. So that's not bad. I've seen more expensive. Yes, so have I. A lot more expensive. That's not bad. Holly's choice of dress had left a little cash over for a proper princessy treat too. Oh, oh. See, with that, you don't need a belt because that that's got enough sparkle and like glamour to it. I think with that, even with the veil, when you have a veil on, you don't need anything else. The height of the tiara is. 10 centimetres, I think. Anyone who knows me knows I like the bigger the better, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think if the rest of us walk down the aisle naked, at least you look amazing, so. I'm going to have a nightmare about that now. Bridesmaids walking down the aisle naked. Hmm, let's not dwell on that. But would Siobhan fare any better? I'm nervous about my bridesmaid dress. Um, just because when we got it, it didn't fit right. Um, and they told me to lose a bit of weight, but I've lost it in all the wrong places. I've lost weight around my stomach, but I haven't around my boobs or my bum. So they don't fit. Oh, um, it's a bit of a concern. Just hold the dress for you. It doesn't fit at all around my boobs. If you look. Could you not cut your boobs off? <laughs> I could try. I'm panicking because I don't want to, like, I don't want to upset you or annoy you because of it. With only weeks to the wedding, it was touch and go whether the dresses would fit on the day. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could just feel my boobs going. <laughs> While weddings can provide plenty of scope for girls to act out their princess fantasies, they seem to give boys the excuse they need to act like, well, boys. In Lancashire, 25-year-old Sophie sent husband-to-be Phil shopping with his best man Rob and usher Alex and a very clear brief. This is my only job for the wedding that I've got to do today and it's pick my suit. Oh, if I don't get this one job done, then that's it. I'll be doomed for all eternity and I'll never be trusted with any job ever again. Phil had strict instructions to buy three matching suits in the perfect shade of silver. Oh, good morning. To fit Sophie's winter wonderland theme and woe betide him if he failed. Phil thinks he has a choice, but I've ingrained into him what I like. So if he comes back with anything else, there's going to be hell to pay. But boys will be boys. I'm thinking more Scotland Highlands. I'm thinking Liverpool FA Cup final kit, white, bad sunglasses, worst ties. I've booked day off work. I'm, I'm thinking real. I could end up in trouble with this. Oh, I think that's where we go. But I'm going for it. Yeah. I'm loving the pink in this film. What one of these? Look at all that <laughs> space under there. <laughs> right now, we're just going to wind Sophie up and uh, see what reaction we can get out of her, I think. <laughs> it's a full blown dress. <laughs> Hello, you're right. Hiya. Have you chose your suit? 
But we've had a bit of a change of heart. What do you mean? We'll send you some pictures and see what no. you think. I've picked three. We've picked some classic Sophie, don't we? We'll look after it. Oh. Phil, I mean it. Arvi Silver. I'll tell you some pictures, all right? No. I'll speak to you in what a bit. What colour are they? Love you, bye-bye. You know what I thought, bye -bye. Love you, bye-bye. As if he's just put the phone down. She's so mad right now. <laughs> And we all know what happens to Sophie when she doesn't get her way. I think the last time I had a little bit of a, a psycho Sophie episode, Phil was completely embarrassed in the middle of a nightclub in Preston. I feel like I should paint my face blue yeah. and start chasing Englishmen. I kind of threw a drink over Phil and just, like, charged my way down the street. And he got me a little battered sausage from the chippy to calm me down. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I think she's gonna have a tantrum for when you get home. He just sent me a picture. What are you doing? You absolute muppet. He looks like a geography teacher. Is he being serious? And the usher? Look, he's got a kilt on. I will not marry him dressed like that. No way. Hello. Hi. What did you think of them ones? You, have you bought them? I've, yeah, just so you can... No, if you were like that at the end of the aisle, I will not walk down it, I will walk straight back out. You know that. If you've bought them, Phil, you're going straight back. Yep, I'm in trouble. Oh, <laughs> yes. If he thinks that that's how he's going to get married, then he can marry his best man. It's an option Phil had probably already considered, Sophie. Can you rustle the cat balls, get Beatrice in? Can you rustle the cat balls? Yes, sure. I've got bigger things to do than get the fucking cat You won't have in a minute. In Coventry, husband-to-be Sean had also been sent to collect the suits for the groom's party, oh. with specific instructions from fiancé Rachel. So as I was leaving the house to go and get the suits, Rach told me to make sure that the toys and the pocket chiefs are claret. And I know the claret because we ordered claret, and when we went for the suit fittings, they were claret. I made sure they were claret. They look claret to me, they look claret to everybody else, but Rachel still doesn't believe that they're claret. So I've got to make sure today that they are, in fact, claret. So I've just been in, collected the suits, and as a little sidearm for my own amusement, I've bought an offensive red toy to wind her up, even though we have the claret toy down there, which is what she's requested. It'll be fun to see her reaction. I very much doubt it'll be fun to be me when she does. As soon as I show her that red toy, she is going to flip. She is going to go like an atom bomb. And it's going to be hilarious. Talk of the devil and she shall appear. Hello. Hello. You all right? Yeah, where are you? Uh, just coming back down the A5 with the suits. Oh, God, you've taken a little while, haven't you? Yeah, we've... we've uh, there's something with the suits that you're not going to like. What? It's the colour of the tie. Are you joking? No. I told you it was red. You what? I told you it was red. Well, it looked claret to me. Sean, I... Oh, my God, I'm going to batter you. No, I told it's... you Rage, it red. Rage, it's not that bad, all right? I reckon you'll be all right with it when you see the colour. They're going to drop them off tomorrow. No, I won't. <laughs> Out of ten, how stressed is Rachel? Probably about 37. I'm not being funny, but considering I was going to go over there, we were going to go over there at the end of November, and you assured me that the ties were the exact right colour. They are. Well, they will be tomorrow. No. Look, I'm just have a look at this one and see what you think. I swear to God, Sean, if it's scarlet, I'm going to go mental. No, that is vile. That's repugnant. What's wrong with it? It's a tie. No, it looks like some chub is going to a football meal. It's a toy. No, it's disgusting. No, nobody's wearing that at my wedding. No, absolutely not. You sure I can't wear that tie? <laughs> that you, goes in there. You're not wearing that tie as long as I've got a hole in my ass. That is disgusting. But when it comes to bad behaviour, Sean's antics were positively child's play <laughs> compared to vivacious party addict Verity. It's my birthday! Who knows exactly how to make the most of a night out? Oh, my God! It's fucking huge! Party diva Verity was determined to paint the town red with her mates. One glass. <laughs> Leading the festivities was her maid of dishonour flatmate, Joel. Verity tonight is looking glamorous, slightly naughty, but fabulous. 
<laughs> so we're going to play a game and it's about how oh, well do you know your future husband. Okay. What would he save in a fire? Me. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Your engagement ring. So instead of saving me, he'd save my ring. How many people do you think Verity slept with? Oh. Are you being serious? The naughty night out of all naughty nights out continued in Soho. And it was bridesmaid Alex's job to try and keep the glamour girl under wraps. <laughs> Hopefully no clothes will be coming off tonight because Ash will absolutely kill me. I'll be making sure no clothes come off tonight. <laughs> Maybe the sash will come off. That's it, be that's it. it. Ash doesn't know what we're capable of, but he would want this. I'm so excited. We're getting married. I'm so excited. We're getting married. I am so excited. That's right, Verity, and the best of luck to you both. Freedom! <laughs> Freedom! And what's good for the gander is also good for the goose. Something that Aisha Aziz should have considered when she foolishly let fiance Tom out of her sight the night before her big day. And on the morning of the wedding, there was no sign of him. Do you know I had a snap? chats from them at like three in the morning. I wasn't awake though, I woke up this morning and I could see videos and Snapchats of them. Aisha, we missed the train, we're in London. The next train's not till half past five. We don't get into Charleston till six. I felt all nighter, Brent felt all nighter. Shrek Club Bay! Party? Sorry, we fucked up. But with just an hour to go and without a care in the world, Tom appeared with his eyebrows and his best man, but no sign of old mate Brev. Brev did not do well last night. No. <laughs> He's lost his credit card, phone, driving licence. And then we ended up in Shoreditch and bust out some moves. I got sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. Just, yeah, yeah. We're, we're sobered up now. Yeah. Beautiful day. Though. Absolutely beautiful day. OK, let's, let's round it up. Let's go find some people, get the room, and let's get changed. Start meeting people. Best man Josh was there, but that didn't mean Aisha could stop fretting. Oh, God, Josh has got the rings, hasn't he? I hope. Best man. Can't believe Tom's here. Is, does Tom look... Is he looking sober? I don't know, I'm seeing him. <laughs> but serving in Afghanistan had taught Tom to remain calm under fire, which was lucky, cos that day he needed it, when Brev arrived with moments to spare. Yeah, well, yeah, so by just about. A uh, couple of beers tied me over this morning, it was all right. Hey, we're here, you know what I mean? It's OK. Things are, things are running sharpishly. Yeah. Slightly <laughs> blunt, but it's all right. And then she just told me to give you a kiss from her. Yeah, so she said so. Definitely. What's going on here? Hey! Nah, she said, she said, say, say, fight. Hey. Hey. I'm always kissing, you know, I'm not scared. I mean, I thought. Oh. Oh. Where's mine then? Oh, oh, mate! But the day's fairy tale event seemed to have given Rabble Rouser Brev pause for thought. You come to these weddings and you see people happy and married going into it, and you start thinking about all the relationships you've messed up yourself. Maybe I need to calm it down. <laughs> While Brev was vowing to calm down, on her wedding morning in Wales, Rhiannon was having a meltdown. A glittery bag containing gifts had gone astray, and Rhiannon had finally lost patience with just about everyone. So, as the old saying goes... Excuse me for a minute. If you want a job done, do it yourself. What? Can't I'm going to have to go do it. So, Did somebody... Do what do you want me no, to do? No, there's nothing you can do, because you don't know what it is. I just need a baby grow, because... Calm down. It's beyond a joke. Up. I'll have a stroke instead of you. Although the wedding venue was only downstairs, Groom James was blissfully unaware of the chaos going on above him. 10 to 12. I get married in 40 minutes. I was fine until I turned up. Weekend. Stressful. I think Rhiannon's running on time for a change. For a change. Maybe. Maybe not. I need to go get that because they haven't done anything they fucking said. Well, go and get what? 
all of the gifts for the cufflinks for all the bikes because I haven't got fucking somebody said. Any goodness here in there. Completely enraged and with less than an hour till she was due to get married, it was on with her spotted baby grow to track down the by now legendary glittery bag. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Chorley, Lancashire, a crack team of support staff were standing by to deal with whatever meltdown Sophie decided to have on her big day. Yeah. Nana, where are my earrings? Crystal, go down. sit down. And the pressure was building. Are you giving them trouble? No, I'm just panicking because Crystal's not right. listening. The rings aren't here, Nan, and I don't like right. people around me. Has anybody texted him to bring them? I, I, know, I don't even know. You're not even ready. I can't get in the bathroom, love. It's full. Right. Us to all go out and leave I just want to get my underwear on, that's right, all, okay. because I'm dead conscious about right. it. Right, I'll go outside and I just want my Nan to get my underwear on, that's all. Do you want me to stay while you're having your underwear? No, I just want my Nan to get my boobs in. Yeah. I'm panicking about it. With minutes until the ceremony was due to start, Sophie kicked everyone but her nan out so she could get dressed. Is it nearly half past? Yeah. Yeah, I think... I think Sophie's going to be a late bride. <laughs> yeah. But unbeknownst to groom Phil, psycho Sophie was about to make an appearance. Are you all right, Sophie? No! Oh, my God. God's sake. If you ask me one more time, I'm going to fucking swing. What can you not do it? Do the bottom one first. You get me in here. Fuck's sake. It had been three months since Sophie last tried on her princess wedding dress, and it was proving a tighter squeeze than she expected. I can't even look in the mirror, man. Because I'm going to look like shit now because of my fat. She's going to be crying. Can you crying? The clock was ticking and Phil was running out of things to keep the wedding party entertained. Happy songs. Luckily for him, the bride had calmed down and was finally in her dress. Can I have some deodorant, yeah. please? Psycho Sophie had retreated, leaving the princess ready to walk down the aisle. I'm all right now. <laughs> hate the underwear. <laughs> North of the border, another bride, Jade, was starting her wedding day the way she intended to carry on. Don't forget Bollinger. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a long day. Jade was nothing if not a trailblazer. She set the bar high on alcohol intake and her friends would need to try to keep up. <laughs> cheers, cheers. cheers. Right, let's go and get auction stations so we don't have that much time to get ready. Cheers, girl. So far, so good. I think maybe I should slow down on the champagne, but I don't, I'm keen to champagne, especially on my wedding day. Even going to get drunk because it's just such a buzz. But they were not getting ready for a wedding yet. They had a fashion show to get through first. Fueled by an entire vineyard, it was less of a fashion show than a fancy dress riot. Bye -bye. I'm shaking. <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. Gotta get those, really good. So I think I need to go and get changed now because we've got a quick dress change in between. So I better go and get uh, organised. I'm getting the fizz open, Jed. Quite a few glasses of champers later, and in her wedding dress, Jade was ready to get married. So if anyone wants to buy me anything for Christmas, well, it's Bollinger. And it was down to event organiser Joe to make sure that Jay got up the aisle. But had the bubbly already taken its toll? Oh, don't drink okay. anymore. So don't drink anymore. Mm -hmm. You're okay? I'm okay, I can handle it. Joe had got her to the door. With just a few more steps, her work here would be done. I'm ready to do this. You ready? Yeah. Right, okay. Get that song on. And as if you're able to get standing to welcome the final party. But would she make it up the aisle unaided? In Paul Dorset, after some sturdy pushing and pulling, Holly had finally squeezed into her dress. And despite juggling a tiny £2,000 budget and a fiancé whose only job was to book a car, her big day had arrived. He better be there. She now just needed to get to the registry office. Sadly, Dean's efforts in the car department had come to naught. Dean had promised Holly a Rolls Royce with seven seats. Sadly, what she got was a borrowed car with just two doors. 
Yep. No. I'm stuck. <laughs> Hello. Wonderful. Hello, I'm Rachel. I'll take that hand. Hi. Hello. Um, just got to do the little thing. Okay, Dean's right. upstairs. Yes, that's fine. He's fine. It's all fine. <laughs> just making okay, sure he's here. Okay, I need some Peter around somewhere. Peter, I need Peter. You. Yeah, you're Peter. You have got my rings, haven't you? 21-year-old Holly and 22-year-old Dean were finally tying the knot. All the ladies had squeezed into their dresses, Dean was present and correct, and the work experience best man had the rings. Ladies and gentlemen, please be outstanding to welcome the bridal party. Holly's father had pitched in to get Holly's dress sorted and proudly walked his daughter down the aisle. So, Dean, do you take Holly here present to be your lawful wedded wife? I do. A delightful sentiment. By contrast, lovebirds Michelle and Amit were keen to express themselves a little more eloquently. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your people shall be my people. The Indian people. The Indian people. They shall be my people. Shall be my people. You may kiss the bride. Ah, oh, true romance indeed. Amy and her husband-to-be, Pat, on the other hand, hadn't even got up the aisle before tensions were rising. Amy couldn't make her entrance till all the guests had arrived. So she had to wait in the highly attractive car park. Well, it's you to be late, mate. <laughs> Not exactly the entrance this diva bride was hoping for. Okay, so my hair looks fabulous. Yeah. Just want to find it. You ready there? Yeah. Good luck. Okay. You got this. Go on then. Amy Rose Briggs. But the wait was worthwhile when Amy and Pat took centre stage for their ceremony. Pat, would you like to read your vows? Finally, I take you as my wife. I better have the chilli in my cheese bite. <laughs> I'm having to hold for as long as I can get my arms around you. <laughs> From this day forward, it's for better or worse, for poorer or poorer still. <laughs> in sickness and in health, until death do us part. Will you, Amy Rose Beale, do me the honour of becoming my wife? <laughs> I now give you this ring as a symbol of our marriage. Who we married again? Mr. and Mrs. Briggs. Thank you. Thousands of miles away in sunny Las Vegas, diva bride Nathan had recovered from his latest nose job, allowing him and fiance Mike to finally head off to the wedding chapel. It's finally happening. It's crazy, isn't it? Their quickie package included limo travel, an express ceremony with a minister, and photos taken by the resident photographer who would also be their witness. Button, got buttons open. All for under $400. Look at this little Cadillac. Cadillac. Thank you, sir. The balance is two ninety eight thirty seven. While Mike dealt with the paperwork, Nathan checked his Katie Price nose one last time before meeting the minister. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Let's get you married. Thank you again. With just the photographer to admire them, Nathan and Mike prepared to become husband and husband. No. With this ring, I take you to be my husband. For better, for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer and for poorer. It's my pleasure to pronounce you husband and husband. <laughs> just married. <laughs> I'm actually husband now. Smile. I'll throw him up. With the formalities over, Nathan got to do what he loves best, posing for the camera. There you go. I got it for both. I love it. Okay? <laughs>
And while Nathan went off in search of mirrors to admire himself, in Inverness, Jade and Mark were about to tie the knot. Sorry. I've got something to tell you. No. So, you're getting married. I'm getting married. <laughs> Until that morning, most of the audience thought they were attending a fashion show. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so all we need now is for Mark to turn up. But found themselves dramatically recast as wedding guests. <laughs> so yeah, this is what we're doing. I did promise to always love you as a partner. I promise to always love you as a partner. But while at the same time, always respect your individuality. I will comfort you. Through sorrow and pain. Through sorrow and pain. I will laugh with you. I will laugh with you through times of joy and happiness. I will try my best. I will try my best. To take the bends out more often. To take the bends out more often. <laughs> it's my pleasant duty and great privilege to hereby declare that you, Mark, and you, Jade, are now husband and wife. Stress and the nerves of getting married at the end of it, it just it couldn't have gone better, I think. In Bosworth, history buff Rachel arrived at her medieval banquet, her very own Game of Thrones. Well, I come in and I saw the thrones that I refused to have outright. It was a bit of a shock, but you know, I'll let it slide. But Sean did get his own moment in the spotlight. Sirs, ma'ams, ladies and gents, we've had a bit of an issue. My speech has gone missing, so I'm just going to go and try and sort something out dead quick. To sort it out, he enlisted a friend, a feather friend. I've employed a friend to come and bring it in, and now here he comes. Ben, Ben, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Where's my scroll? <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you, well done. Thank you. When all the vows had been exchanged, kisses and hugs given and received, it was time to let it all hang out. And one couple succeeded in putting all the rest of our couples in the shade, Michelle and Amit. You don't see one of these every day, a Ghanaian slash Indian mashup. After months of practice, these novice dancers got to show off their moves in front of a huge audience. And as a surprise for her new hubby, Michelle changed into her Bollywood outfit for a very special performance. <laughs> These weddings took months of planning, cost thousands of pounds, not to mention the blood, sweat and tears. But was it all worth it for our badass brides? This wedding Ooh. has been the best day of my life. <laughs> Does it feel real? It's, it's a lucky dream at the moment. <laughs> yeah, everything's been perfect, so really happy. I won't do it again. It's fun one to I won't do it again. I'd do it all day, I would. <laughs> happy? Always. You yeah, happy? Yes. Are you? Yes. That's all right then. Done. I'm all filled up for the day. I'm just trying to get your dress up. Are you glad that we did everything we did to get today to be how it's been? Yeah. I'm glad it's yeah, all I'm worth it. It is now, yeah. Yeah. There were times when I thought, fuck this.